Hi everybody. I'm here to give you a whole bunch of tips uh, that I think will be really, really helpful for you. And these are things that I've learned over the course of many years playing harmonica. Tip number one, make sure your harmonicas work. Now this sounds obvious, but sometimes if you leave a harmonica sitting around for a while, in this case, you know, stuff can get stuck on reeds. And so it's a good idea to shake them out against your leg and then to blow in and out of each hole. First, just blow all the way up and down the harmonica and then draw all the way up and down the harmonica and then blow in and out of each hole quickly to see how the response of the reeds are. And uh, this will tell you a lot before you get up on stage and find you have a reed that's stuck, okay? Tip number two, make sure the keys of your harmonicas are visible. How do you do this? Well, as you know, every harmonica comes marked with what key it is, but those marks are usually engraved into the metal and they're not very visible in a, a normal situation, even playing in a club with lights or if it's a dark room, uh, it's hard to see. So there are all sorts of people who make stick on labels uh, and you can put them either on the front of your harmonica, on the end, depending on what kind of case you use, or in both places so that no matter how you pick it up, you'll be able to see the key of your harmonica. Tip number three, organize your harps. This is really important. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people show up at jam sessions with a, a attache case full of harmonicas all jumbled together, a bunch of microphones and chords. This is really bad. You need to organize them. And the easiest way to organize harps, I believe, is by key, starting from the lowest one you normally use up to the highest one. So. G is the lowest standard tuned harp. That's usually the first one that I put on the bottom of a case. And then I go up in half steps. G, A flat, A, B flat, B, etc., etc., uh, until you run out of slots. That's one way. The second way is organize your harps in the order that you're going to use them in the set, if the set has been predetermined. Sometimes uh, I would put maybe two B flats next to each other because you know, maybe uh, I was a little worried that maybe one of them would stick or something like that. And so I want to make sure that I have uh, an option that I can quickly grab another one. I know where it is. Tip number four, make sure that you can hear yourself on stage. Now this sounds very simple, but it isn't. As anyone knows who sat in at a jam session, you come up to play the harmonica. The mic could be EQ'd any, any one of a number of ways, depending on who was playing or singing into it before you, it's a very scary thing. There's very little control that you have there except to tell the sound man stuff and to tell the monitor guy stuff, the, assuming that there's two of them. Sometimes it's just one person doing both. But if it's a situation under your control, you should, in sound check, make sure to play as soft and as loud as you're going to play on the actual gig. And that way you give the sound man uh, the full range of your sound. And when you get up on stage to play the gig, try to play the way you did in sound check. Because if you start eating that microphone, you know, if you've been three or four inches away from it and suddenly you're a half inch away from it, everything's different. They're gonna just turn you down. And sometimes you'll come down in the monitor as well when that happens, not usually, but sometimes. And so this, instead of, getting angry at sound men. Just give them a chance to do their job and so that you can also do yours. In a situation with a handheld mic and an amp, it's the same thing. Make sure that you play the full volume, uh, range of volume through your amp in the sound check that you're gonna use on the gig. And also the people around you who are playing, they all have to be cooperative as well. And so uh, it's not just on you. Tip number five. Make sure that you can hear yourself with headphones on while recording. This is really, really important because the harmonica, if you're recording acoustically, it has very little volume. There's two ways of dealing with this in terms of the type of headphones that you're gonna use. You can use closed headphones, which totally enclose around your ears, and that way you can't hear your acoustic playing or anyone else that's in the room. Uh, this can work really well. Or open ear headphones, which are usually made of some sort of foam material. Um, and you can actually hear 
yourself acoustically as well as what's in the headphones. Now, they both have their pros and cons and you can only learn what those are by trying. The second aspect of hearing yourself well is the mix. In other words, the balance of instruments that you're hearing in your headphones. And the more people that you're playing with, the more variables there are. So if you're playing with a band, you can tell the recording engineer to tailor your mix to suit you. In the old days, you couldn't do this. Now you can. Almost every recording studio will offer uh, individual mixes. Some of them you could control yourself from a little board, but if they're too loud, try to avoid saying, turn me up. Because if they're already too loud, if you turn yourself up, everything's gonna be too loud. And then you won't be able to think straight after a while. That's a trap that some people get into. The third aspect is to add a little reverb to my own sound in the headphones. I prefer a medium sized hall, about two seconds or a little bit more of reverb and uh, just the right amount. Because when your sound is coming into your ear from right next to yourself, if you don't have any reverb, it's a very un it can be a very unpleasant experience. So all of those points can really change the outcome of a recording. Tip number six, know how to do some basic repairs on your heart. Don't be afraid to open them up. There's only one kind of harmonica made now that you really can't open, which is the Hona Marine Band, the classic Marine Band that's put together with nails. But every other kind of harp, you can open up. And some of them take Phillips screws, some of them are slot head screws. Make sure to have the right kind of screwdrivers with you. You know, if something's stuck, if a reed is stuck, you can just take the reed cover plates off, reach in there and get it out. Or if you need to adjust uh, the clearance of a reed, if a reed is sticking, you can delicately reach in there with a paper clip or a little tiny screwdriver and try to back that reed off a little bit so it doesn't stick. And you can also clean stuff out of it, which is a really good idea. Um, at the very least, take the reed cover plates off and you can rinse them in, uh, in water, warm soapy water, cold water, whatever you have, or wipe them off with a tissue or with a piece of cloth. All sorts of stuff can get inside a harmonica over time. And sometimes I'll even just uh, run my fingernail along the groove at the end of the reed plate get stuff out that's been in there. Nothing major, uh, nothing where you can hurt any of the parts of the inside of the harp. So uh, these are just helpful hints that I think uh, will really help. And from all my years of experience, I also have some don'ts for you. The first don't <laughs> is a list of stuff you shouldn't eat before you play. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat anything. Uh, you know, a nice meal, depending on who you are. Some people like to eat more, some like, like to eat less, but I would definitely avoid peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> Stuff sticks all over the inside of your mouth. And popcorn, this is the worst. You know, you're in the recording studio and everyone is making microwave popcorn. Hey, you want some? Don't. It, it'll, it, it can stick to your teeth, get stuck in your gums, like, end up inside your harmonica. And the other one is one of my favorite foods, peanuts, just peanuts. Uh, there's all sorts of little pieces of a peanut that can stick and can end up inside your harmonica really bad. And then the fourth thing is like all, any kind of sticky candy that's gooey. You just don't want that. Don't number two. Try your very best not to pick up your harp upside down. I just want to assure you that it's very, very easy to pick up a harmonica upside down. And when that happens, uh, several, things, <laughs> several things can occur. Uh, so if you're trying to start out a solo on the first whole draw with a nice, deep, soulful bend, you end up on the 10th whole draw. It sounds like feedback. I mean, the engineer can hear that. Turn your mic off. Uh, I did that once in the recording studio, and uh, I hit that first horrible squeak. And then I cursed and they cut that out. And then I, I, I was so angry that I played a really good solo afterwards. It's on the uh, Yeehaw Factor on the Flectones UFO Tofu album. Try not to pick up the wrong harp. And if this happens, there's two things you can do. One, you can very quickly put it down and grab the right one. Or you can keep trying to play on the wrong one. 
One time I heard Junior Wells do that. He was playing with Buddy Guy, and he obviously picked up the wrong harp. And he still managed to play something really interesting and sideways on it that he never would have played if he just picked up, you know, a D harp and played an A. It was some other instrument, like a C harp, playing in A, blues, you know. And he made it work. Don't, number four, don't use any kind of lip balm. If you do that, a harmonica will get stuck on your lips. It's really bad to do that. Number five, don't soak your harps. Years ago, a lot of the blues players would soak their harps. What that would do, it would make the wood swell up, uh, the wood comb, make it more airtight. The wood would swell up against the reed plate. And also when the reeds are wet, they behave differently. And it would sound really great for about a tune. And then you'd have to soak it again. By the end of the night, the comb was all swollen out. Uh, if you tried to play that harmonica again, you just cut your lips up. It's not that you can't wash harmonicas, especially now that the combs are usually sealed or that they're made of plastic. But don't soak a harp on a gig. I mean, this is something that, like I said, 50, 60 years ago, people would do. Don't, number six, don't put a harmonica in your pocket without a case. Two very bad things can happen. One, you can squash that harmonica uh, if you sit on it funny, if you put it in a back pocket. Never put it in your back pocket, by the way. Uh, but even, even if it's in a normal pocket, you lean up against something without a case on the harmonica, you can squash the reed cover plates. And the other thing that can happen is all sorts of stuff can get into the inside of the harmonica. Pocket lint, uh, you know, crumbs of a cookie you might have had in your pocket. Uh, it's really tempting to want to just throw a harp in your pocket and go out and, you know, go for a walk, go for a hike, whatever. If you do that, put it in a case first. I hope you find these do's and don'ts helpful and that it helps you deal with all sorts of situations that might come up in your playing.